right, guys, I'm very excited to bring you this interview with Aaron Blevins today. Um, Aaron is really well known in the local Utah fitness scene and honestly worldwide. She's got some awesome accolades. She's really keeping it real in this episode. So let me tell you a little bit about Aaron. Um, Aaron has her own long list of accolades, including um, being very competitive in CrossFit. Um, but she also is a chef and she was the private chef for Henry Cable um, in preparation for his film in the Justice League. Um, and her husband, Michael, they are like this power duo and he's a trainer. And also they train Henry um, for the film. Um, she has worked on a lot of movies. She's worked for the Atlanta Braves and doing nutrition coaching and cooking for some of the best female downhill racers. Um, and now her latest project is a cookbook called The Essential Carnivore Diet cookbook, which she co-authored with Vivica Menegas. Um, and so we're talking about that, but we're also talking about Aaron's own experiment with the carnivore diet and what that's been like and how she, um, optimizes it for athletic performance and doing a little bit of carbs here and there. And also she's getting into, um, she refers to a lot as deeper nutrition and supplementing for those things. Um, really great episode. I just appreciate her so much keeping it real and just telling you her whole experience and how she does things. You can tell she's not dogmatic about anything. She's just willing to try new things. Um, she was also a vegan for 10 years and talked about what that transition was like. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Here is Erin Blevins. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more or REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test, there's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So, um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So, um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios. Right. So, um, yeah, take advantage of it guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount onto you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about higher coaching. This is my coaching system. And I get a lot of questions because, um, it's not just training and nutrition. We do that. I love training and nutrition, obviously, but we also do more. We do personal development and the way that's delivered is a 90 day personal development program that you go through with me when you work with me. So it's a video course with questions for you to deep dive in yourself for the first 90 days of working with me. Now that comes as part of a morning routine. I am really big on the morning routine and you ask any of my clients, I will push you on that because it's life changing. So we start with meditation and then we do gratitude and then that personal development program. Um, that's our deep dive psychologically. And after the 90 days, you go to the next level, you start doing what I'm doing currently. And it's a lot of strategic goal setting and it's really, really honestly, miraculous what's happening, not only in my life, but in my clients' lives. Like it brings me to tears when I get on calls with them. I'm like, do you see yourself? Like, do you see what you're doing? That is so cool. So anyway, that is um, for me, the bread and butter of my coaching. I love it so much. Um, also though, in, in regards to your body, I also like to go deep dive and see what might be holding you back. So that's where all the biohacking side comes in. We do a 
physiological deep dive as well. So we do blood testing, hair mineral testing, DNA testing, body composition, or a ring. Um, so your heart rate variability, your sleep cycles. Do you have any deficiencies? Do you have issues with sleep you didn't even know about? Let's find out, you know? Um, so that's that's how I approach things in higher. There's more. We do prizes every month. Nikes, Lulus, um, all of my favorite products and foods to keep you motivated, to keep those habits up. We do three Zoom calls a week so you get support. We have a private Facebook group. We're all vibing and, and cheering each other along the way. We get raw and real and honest. And it's just, yeah, it's like... I created my life and I created my life the way I like and I like to deep dive with a bunch of bad A people that really want to optimize their lives and it's an honor for me to serve them in that. Um, so I just thought I would tell you about it because I don't know if I talk about it quite enough. So if you're looking for that, if you're like wanting the next level in your body and also in your life, truly, that's what we're doing. So. Uh, seeking bad A's <laughs> to join higher. I do have some spots open. Um, it is limited. I can only handle so many clients at a time, but if you would like to find out if it's a good fit for you, you can go to my website, taragarrison.com and you can request a call and we can see if, if it's a great fit for you. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to tell you guys about higher so you could get a little glimpse into what I'm doing on the daily. And if you're looking for something a little more self-guided, I do have my keto in and out program, um, on my website. Site. So you can either do a small taste and try it for eight weeks, or you can go a full year. That baby is comprehensive. There is a video of every recipe, video of every exercise. There's a 60 day course teaching you how to do keto or 30 days of keto. And then 30 days of bringing back the carbs, FAQ video library, Facebook group, like all of that. So if you're more of like the self guided person and you just want stuff planned for you, um, that is also an option on my website. It's taragarrison.com. I'll link it all in the show notes and all right, we'll go ahead and get into our episode. Okay, guys, I'm here with Erin Blevins, and I'm really excited for you guys to get to know Erin and who she is. We're going to talk about her new cookbook, um, The Essential Carnivore Diet. I've been looking through these recipes, Erin, and it's like, it's not a shocker. You guys will find out for in a second why it's not a shocker that these recipes look freaking amazing, like carnivore waffles. I was like, what? Um, and just everything <laughs> looks so good. But let's let's backtrack before we dive into that, which is your newest project. Um, can you give us a, give the audience a background? on your own journey with fitness and kind of where it has taken you to this point. Absolutely. Thanks. And I'm excited to be chatting with you today. Um, yes, the, the Essential Carnivore Diet Cookbook is my most recent project. Um, Vivica and I just co-authored um, a carnivore diet cookbook. So it's, it's very basic. Um, it's very backbone to carnivore diet. And then we kind of dive into a little bit more like ancestral style of eating. Um, and I'll kind of tell you how I landed on that. It was kind of an interesting loop around because obviously, you know, my background, you know, that I've been a competitive athlete in multiple sports. And so you're like, okay, how do you, how do you possibly train CrossFit or compete in CrossFit on such a low carb? And, and, um, I'll tell you kind of how I got there. So, yeah. um, my background, I started as an endurance athlete and, um, I met my husband at Jim Jones about, uh, 11 years ago now. And from there, that's so he just awesome. Kind of, that's so I'm going to yeah. interrupt real quick. That is so appropriate that you two met there. Can you tell uh, people a little bit about Jim Jones just if they haven't heard of it? Um, Jim Jones is, so the original owner of Jim Jones was Mark Twight. So Mark Twight's Jim, and he's actually at our company now. So he's, mm. he's business partners with my husband, um, Michael Blevins, but they were originally known for climbing Mark's climbing background. Um, and then they kind of turned into this hardcore gym, um, like cross training gym. Mark was actually one of the first CrossFit affiliates, which uh, most, mm. uh, most people don't know. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. And then kind of got kicked out of CrossFit because he wanted to do his own thing and teach his own philosophies. Um, but they were most, I think most well known for 300. So they were the gym that trained 300. Um, Zack Snyder wanted all of their actors to train like a military platoon and, and act like a military platoon and to basically, you know, have that uh, concept, you basically have to run someone through a project. And um, Mark had, had done so many military projects up until that point that he's like, okay, 
I don't really want to do this. I don't really want to do this project, but I eventually he did, obviously. Um, and so that's what Jim Jones was known for. And then my husband and Mark started doing some other movies. Um, they were hired to do 300, uh, Rise of an Empire. So my husband went and worked on that one, went to South Africa and so then they cool. filmed in Bulgaria. Yeah, it was pretty cool to see all those guys just get like jacked out of their mind. It was really <laughs> cool. Um, and then Superman. So Henry Cavill, um, Man of Steel. And then Mark went and did Wonder Woman um, and Aquaman. So Jason Momoa. And then our most recent movie that my husband and I did was Justice League, which was really cool. So we got to move to London and yeah. um, we did all of the, yeah, we did all of the um, pre, pre-training uh, movie prep. And then I chefed for Henry Cavill the whole time. So um, my background is not only in fitness, but also nutrition and chefing, which is yeah. cool because, you know, a lot of the chefs in the past that we've worked with, um, they obviously are fantastic chefs. Like they know how to make really good food, but as you know, as a competitor as well, um, it's not always about just delicious, amazing food. Like you have to track macros, you have to have a balance. You have to know, you know, does this meal match the effort that was just given in the gym, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and I know that makes sense to you, but to a lot of chefs are like, well, I've never done anything more, um, you know, more challenging than just a walk uphill in my neighborhood. And so it was kind of cool to like bring it all together and like really get some of our actors dialed in with, you know, some legitimate nutrition planning. Um, yeah, to fuel their like athletic ability as well. So some of these guys that we've been working with are just amazing athletes too. You know, they're not just the body. They're also, they move really well. They're really strong. So, um, and it's so cool too. just interject real quick that yeah. like so often, I, I mean, I'm guilty of it for sure. Just like pulling cold chicken out of the fridge and just eating that real quick and like moving on. Yeah. But it's like, it's kind of rare that you find someone who takes the time to make like kind of this macro based food taste amazing or this exercise performance food taste amazing. So, I mean, that's such a gift and you guys are kind yeah. of the double threat there with the training and the nutrition. This is really yeah. cool. Yeah. So we can just dial it in really, really well. And Mm -hmm. the cool part about working with Henry on their, on our last job. Um, and, and I was really present on, on that project. Um, my husband and Henry worked really closely on man of steel, but I wasn't necessarily doing his nutrition on, on that project. So the cool thing about this one is like we rented, uh, when we weren't at the studio, we actually rented some space out of a a really cool CrossFit gym in London. Mm -hmm. We just had the whole, the whole place like to ourselves and we would get into like some really hard met cons and like we would all train together and so, so cool. you know as soon as we were done it's like okay like all of us kind of need this this and this like let's build right. this amazing body and we're kind of all doing the we're kind of all doing the superman diet and, and nutrition plan along with with the fitness um to complement it uh which was really fun and it was a good learning experience for me um so, and to interrupt again, real quick, yeah. how was it like kicking Superman's ass and training? <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, what's funny is he's actually a fairly fit guy. Um, Henry stays. Well, well actually the, I think that this is the longest he's really stayed fit. Um, when we first got to London, he had, I think he had done like just so much PR work and he'd been traveling. He wasn't really fit. He wasn't used to the volume. And so when we dove into getting him prepped for Justice League, like, I wouldn't say he was like super out of shape, but he definitely needed to like get used to the different training yeah. plan again. Um, and he buckles down really well. Like, I bet. you know, <laughs> if, if we're like, okay, let's clean up. He's, he's really good at cleaning up his nutrition and like knowing that it's time to buckle down and work. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he gets really fit. Like he's, he's really good at deadlifting. Um, Michael, obviously, as you know, um, you know, if you're getting ready for something and you've done physique as well, um, if you're getting ready for something, you want to train every day. Like you need to have that like big, that big base of workload, but you can't necessarily just trash yourself day in and day out because then you tend to retain water. And so it was really cool to see the different things that my husband put together, like gymnastics and handstand holds and things like that, that would Mm -hmm. build a really nice muscle 
but not necessarily trash you for the next day of training. So right. it was just so cool to watch. Um, yeah. And then in the meantime, like when we travel and do these movies, like we usually get really close with whatever CrossFit gym that we're, you know, close to or training with so that we have a place to train. And um, yeah, I started competing quite a bit in Europe just over the past like five years since, since we worked on that project, which has been really cool. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> what's your, when you're, when you were competing, did you, when did you start carnivore on this trajectory? Okay. So I'll kind of go into that. Um, so I've, I've been competing in CrossFit at like a pretty high international level for the past, uh, since 2016. Um, and you know, doing some big, what are now, so what would, I guess they would be like regionals for CrossFit. They're now like sanctioned events. Mm. So all these big CrossFit sanctioned events, you can a team ticket, individual ticket to be, um, I, I was eating like, I wouldn't say really high carbohydrate. Like I've always done well on carbohydrates, but I've never needed like 300 grams, like Mm -hmm. some CrossFit are just like ridiculous with the cars. Um, so I want to say like my highest carbohydrate load has probably been like 180 grams per day, you know, and it, it like, I can say that's consistent for like months and months. I just, I'm so spot on with food timing, but man, carnivore, when I first got into carnivore and I, I waited for a little while. So my co-author, um, she did a podcast with my husband and she's like, Oh, I have this book deal. I need to write this book, but I'm having a hard time getting started. And Michael was like, Oh, you should have Aaron help you. And so we kind of partnered up and got this book done. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to put this on hold because I, I don't think I can write about something unless I really know, like, I know people are going to just, you know, everyone starts asking you. And if you don't know, you can't give them accurate information. And so I waited and waited and I'm like, man, I just, I want to keep training. And I know that this diet's going to pull away from my training. And I actually was training with my husband one day and I rolled my ankle. I jumped off of the curb in front of our gym running and I like rolled my ankle into a pothole and it tore all the ligaments on the top of my mm-hmm. foot. And a couple of days later, I'm like, you know what, this is a really good time to try that diet. <laughs> so <Yep. laughs> I, yeah. And so uh, and it ended up being really good. Like I got super lean, like body composition wise. I think that that's like the best I've ever looked like just so nonchalantly lean. Um, and I started to notice some stuff too. Um, like my brain was really balanced. Like I'd never, I know that people explain, you know, Oh, I just feel so clear on keto. I'm in ketosis. My brain feels good. It was different. Like I don't know. I definitely wasn't in ketosis because the protein's too high to be in ketosis, but my, like my emotional state felt, felt really good. And, um, I had a really hard year last year. My mom passed away a brain cancer Mm, and, um, three weeks later, one of my best friends died in a plane accident. And it was just like, Holy cow, I've been hit with a lot. And like, I, I feel like if I was just constantly eating carbohydrates and stuck in this weird insulin cycle, I think that I wouldn't have been able to handle what, what I did with such grace. Mm. Like I was able to navigate really well and like feel really organized. And I don't want to say that that was all the diet, but I, I just have never felt that kind of clarity before. And, um, now that I've, I've, like ran other people through the diet and I've had lots of clients and tons of feedback. Like that's the main thing that people report is the mental clarity and like they feel really balanced emotionally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, it just, it kind of fell into place with, you know, when I was writing it and where I kind of was with my athletic career, I think if I was training to get ready for a competition, it wouldn't have worked. I probably would have still put it on hold. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just kind of fell into place. And now I have this really rad, like tangible publication, you know, Mm -hmm. and the cool thing about this book is it's, it's not just a cookbook. Like we run, we run through some really cool recipes They're Like I said, they're minimal because carnivore diet is very minimal. Um, 
but there's a ton of diet information in there. Like even if you're not wanting to be a long-term like meat-based dieter or meat-based eater, there's some really good, um, elimination diet information in there. Like, Hey, run through this for a month. Let's fix your gut. Let's balance out your hormonal profile. So yeah, yeah, it was kind of a cool experience. It just fell into place. I love that. So. I, I always tell my clients when they have injuries, I'm like, Hey, while one thing's down regulated, you can upregulate other things. You have a knee injury, like work on your upper yeah. body, or you have, you can't work out at all. Work on your nutrition. Like you can't, you know, yeah. work on any of those work on your mindset. Like you it's opening yeah. up time for you to try something different. So I love that insight. Yeah. And I'm, I'm the same way, like with carnivore, um, I've used it as a tool, right. For clients who have mm-hmm. severe gut issues and it's amazing yeah. elimination diet, because you're getting all of the, like most, most of the time you're going to get ketones and, um, this mm-hmm. anti-inflammatory effect and the gut. I mean, for people with severe gut issues, like it's life-changing for them to be able to eliminate all those things that are aggravating mm-hmm. it for a while so they can heal. And I've experienced that too. I know what you're talking about. Like when I first went mm-hmm. keto, even though I eat carbs now, like when I first went, I think I was so like low carb and kind of low fat ish that I experienced that like emotional well being. Like I was like, I feel like yeah. I'm more balanced, like, Whoa, what was going on with me for a minute? <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, That's amazing. And one of the other cool things that I've kind of been playing around with lately I and no offense to you because I know that you are big into this world but I try I really try not to take on people that are doing bodybuilding shows oh I'm not big into that world girl I'm not big in it Uh -uh, that was an experiment I that was done that was a little project (laughs) I'm excited to kind of talk to you a little bit more about it because you did fabulous and like out of all of the people that I see online and all of the, you know, clients that I'm like, okay, please don't do this. Like, I knew that you would have the background to be like, all right, I'm going to do a proper refeed after. And like, my psychology is healthy enough to like take me through this process. So, um, I, I have recently taken on a couple people who have done bodybuilding shows. And like I said, I I usually turn them away, Mm -hmm. um, only because I don't think that most people have healthy enough psychology to do the back end work, yeah. you know, of like yep. looking so lean and feeling so good and yep. like being this like ridiculous physique and then mm-hmm. coming out the other end and being like, okay, well, what, what's too much now? My fat, like what does the other end look like? Mm-hmm. But I've seen, um, I actually prepped a girl for Playboy, which was awesome. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, I put her on carnivore diet and she's like, when does the diet start? When does the diet start? And I'm like, girl, you're on the diet. Like, this is the diet. And she, yeah, she never felt like she was on a diet. We didn't have to mess with salts or waters um, or water intake. And she, she basically did her shoe, stayed on carnivore on the back end. And then we started implementing a few carbs here and there. And then basically, I I don't know how she eats now, but we did like a little refeed with some carbohydrate, like low toxicity carbohydrates. And Mm -hmm. she looked fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I've kind of worked that with, with a couple people now, because when you do carnivore diet, uh, similar to keto, you just don't hold on to any water. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, you're Mm -hmm. stripped of water without, without messing with salts. And so I don't know, I I wish that I would have kind of known about this diet or this way of eating while I was working with Henry, because he, he would have loved it. And it, you know, it would have been a little bit easier putting him on something like this. I think it would have been fun to play around with, with him. For so. sure. Yeah. It's nice. Cause it's not, yes, it's restrictive because you're only eating meat, but it's not like I have mm-hmm. to count every calorie and everything has to be perfect. It's a little, you get a, yeah. you know, you're restrictive in one way, but not in others. And also I just have to say, I, thank you for saying what you said. Like, so I've always been super, the reason yeah. I did the bodybuilding thing was because I hate that industry. Like I, I was yeah. honest with it. Like I've been super opposed to it for so many mm-hmm. years. And I just tend to attract a lot of those clients who have competed before yeah. because they think, Oh, 
keto. That will make me stay shredded forever. And that you're right. They're like a wreck. They're wrecking their emotions. They're wrecking their relationship with their body, their relationship with food, Mm -hmm. their, their blood work is a mess. Like it's all of it, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I was like, let me go in the hole and see, let me see what this is actually like. So I have some context here and you know, we're recording this, this episode will come out in two weeks, but I just released the episode today talking about my own journey afterward. Cause I'm only about a week and a half out to about two weeks out from it now. And it's even me with like, I've had this loving relationship with my body and nurturing mm-hmm. it and fitness. Cause I love it. Like yeah. coming out of that kind of restriction, I was a freaking mess last week. Like I was eating standard American diet, like stuff I haven't eaten yeah. like six or seven years. I was like, it was like, I yeah. needed to prove to myself that I didn't have an eating disorder is almost what it felt like. Like I needed to remove oh, all restrictions because it was just so yeah. restrictive, you know? So it messed me up for a minute. I was like, who am I? I don't even recognize myself, but Finally, it was like, I I had to start asking myself, like, what would you normally do? (laughs) I was like, I had to get back to that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a crazy journey. So I appreciate your insights on that. Um, Absolutely. Did you feel like you had any crazy cravings at all? Oh was yeah. It, was it no, just I'm, all cravings all day? <laughs> it was like, I mean, towards the end of it, like I was craving things that I don't ever eat, like, like, mm-hmm. like banana cream pie. And like, like I don't, oh, I don't weird. eat like that, you know? So it was like all these kind yeah. of like old comfort foods. I think it was just cause I was in so much discomfort. Cause I was eating like yeah. 1300 calories a day. And I mean, I don't know how accurate my Fitbit is, but it was like 3000 mm-hmm. calorie burn. I know I'm over 2000. And so yeah. for that long of a chronic calorie deficit, it's crazy. What happens to your mind? It's like anything. I will yeah. eat anything. As long as it has a lot of calories, I want it, you know? So, yeah. Well, and from what I've seen, like leading up to a show, um, and I try to stay away from this the best that I possibly can, but obviously like I ran into the same issue when I was, when we were getting ready for like shirtless scenes with Henry Cavill on, on justice league, the food value is, is, not there. Like the nutritional value isn't there because you have to spread out calories. Right. You're eating very low fat. You're very low carb, yep. depending on how you do it. I mean, I've seen a couple different ways, but you know, you're using oil sprays and butter spray, like anywhere to cut, <laughs> cut out, you know? And so yeah. I think once you get to that point where you've been deprived for so long, it's not just actual calories. It's, it's also that deeper nutrition. Yeah. Um, and so obviously it's just like competing. Like when I get done competing, I'm like, all right, where are the apple fritters? Like I need sugar quick. And I don't know if your body's necessarily looking for apple fritters. I think it's, uh, (laughs) I think it's looking for a deeper nutrition, but sugar's the fastest thing that gets there, Yeah, you know? And so, um, one of the things that I've been toying around with lately is organ meat, which is disgusting. (laughs) <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. I just, I can't make myself love it. And I can't lie about it. Um, Same. <laughs> I've, I've had heart and some people eat it raw and I'm like, man, I just really like my food cooked guys. Um, yeah. uh, but heart's I've okay. In, Liver is yeah, brutal. <laughs> it is brutal. And I've put it in meatballs. Like if you hide it, you can hide it, but that deeper nutrition, man, I'll tell you, I, um, when I started competing, I have a lot of clients that have lost their period because they're too yeah. lean or they're competing too hard. Um, and I, I lost my period in 2016 and it never came back. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, what's really going on? Wow. Cause at first I'm like, this is great. You know, I don't have to worry about this. It's inconvenient. And now I don't have this system <sighs> working anymore. And, um, I had this really cool training partner for a little while named Christine on Dolly in Salt Lake. And she's like, no, that's not normal. Like it's for sure not healthy. Yeah. And I'm like, uh Oh, okay. Maybe I should, maybe it's time to revisit this. Um, and I, well, as soon as I started carnivore diet, a couple months in, I had a company ask, um, if they could send me some product ancestral supplements, you probably see them, them online. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I'm like, sure, whatever people send me supplements all the time. And I started taking liver, heart, and mixed organs. And literally within a month, I was back on a regular cycle, which is really crazy. So I started, yeah. So I started diving into like deeper nutrition, like organ meats and like where you get your B complexes and your CoQ10 and like some of the stuff you take supplements for, and it's all Mm -hmm. in organs. And so Mm -hmm. I've been really stoked to, you know, use 
use ancestral supplements, but also dive into that like deeper nutrition. Yeah. Um, and so anytime, like if I do any kind of project where someone has to get really lean again on the back end, whether it's with, you know, the easy way taking ancestral supplements or, or something like that, or like blending an organ meat back into food. I think that it's super important to do not just a refeed and food volume. So the calories are there, but also a refeed and actual nutrition. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you think about it, like if we were eating animals and food was super mm -hmm. scarce, we would eat all of it. We would eat everything we possibly could. And so that's like a basic part of eating animals, but we're like these little spoiled, you know, Westerners that (laughs) were like, I don't even want to know that it ever had bones in it. And it's like, I'm like, well, there goes all your collagen intake. And, you know, so we're missing a lot of the nutrients from our animals. And you're, I love, I saw on your website that you, you have like a discount with ancestral supplements guys. So it, mm-hmm. what is it? Is it shut up work. Uh, shut up eat. Um, oh, my, okay. my okay, discount code is, sh- is shut up eat, but my website's shut up work.com. Got yeah. it. Okay. So shut up eat <laughs> is the discount code with ancestral supplements guys. And they're amazing. Like I'm such a super nerd. They have like everything you could ever yeah. want from the nutrients from animals. Like it's, it's such a cool company. So check that out for sure. Yeah. But you're right. Like yeah, if we're awesome. not going to be able to get ourselves to eat liver, on the reg, which I admit, like, you know, Drew Manning, that he's a mutual friend. Yeah. And I had liver at his house once and he was like laughing so hard. Cause I was like, crap, dude, I can't do it. It is so hard to eat. Like I can't. And he's like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, it's like, so it's a really great solution. If you're just not going to eat liver or organs. That's funny. That's a, that's a bold move for uh, like serving organ meat to a guest. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're pretty good. I love friends. Drew. He's awesome. Oh, good. good. Yeah. yeah. His daughter was like scarfing it. So I guess I wish I would have started when I was younger. <laughs> yeah. He's doing something right over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, playing around with like some deeper nutrition where, you know, that has been absent with my personal practice, you know, working with athletes for so long, I have a nutrition practice. And so, you know, well, I don't just get athletes for, for clients, you know, people come to me with whatever issue they might have autoimmune or Hashimoto's. Um, but something that's been really absent from my practice is, you know, some of the deeper nutrition It's like, okay, let's just throw carbs at you. You're an athlete. And I think that there's better ways. And I, I think I needed to get a little bit older before I started diving into that because now I need it for me too, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's been kind of cool to see like my personal practice expand in that way. And you know, how I, how I treat nutrition and how we can use it to heal our bodies and, and feel what we're doing every day. Yeah. So. And I, I noticed in your book that you were talking about how you guys have modified carnivore a bit to favor athletic mm-hmm. performance. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Um, we talk about it a little bit in our book. I actually had to, um, I had to come out with, uh, a little PDF because there was some things that we left out of the book. We just, we didn't have room and we didn't want to get so in depth with it. Like we didn't want to have to talk about like energy systems. And yeah. so we kind of left it out of the book, but I, I do have a PDF in my bio that kind of explains like fueling for athletes. If you're eating carnivore, um, but we do touch on it a little bit in the book. Once you go through, um, you know, the process of healing your gut and, you know, feel what it feels like to really go strict carnivore. Cause people usually feel really good, but then they want to put a time cap on it. You know, what am I going to do in two weeks or what am I going to do after 30 days? And then we, we start supplementing things back in like raspberries and honey and a little bit of Greek yogurt. And, um, we didn't talk too much about dairy in the book because we wanted to heal some autoimmune Mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but I, I eat Greek yogurt and I eat a little bit of dairy. I do fine with it. Um, so we use that with really good food timing around training and it, Mm -hmm. after doing the elimination diet, it feels like rocket fuel. Like I never thought that I would ever get away with like 60 to 70 grams of carbohydrates per day and like train as much as I train. Um, but yeah, it feels really good to kind of like wipe that out and then add it back in, um, kind of like take taking coffee out for a month and then drinking your first cup. You're like, so yeah. Um, we did start to add a little bit of that back in. And, and even since my book and the PDF, I've added a little bit of like, uh, I still won't do like a full salad, which is so funny to people. Um, 
but I've had a little bit of squash around training. Like that's a really low toxicity, uh, food, um, berries, fruit, um, uh, cucumbers, things like that. Like I try to stay away from nightshades the best that I possibly can. Um, and I feel really good. So I've added some things back in, but not like full blown, you know, I used to be, I was vegan for 10 years. And so it's nothing like that. Yeah. It's mostly me based with a little bit of supplemental things here and there to support effort. Can you, can you describe the difference between your vegan experience and so far your carnivore experience? Yes. And I like, I always start off by saying I loved being vegan. Like my dad was a chef in Salt Lake. Um, we had like a really awesome community here. My dad was one of the first chefs to kind of like branch off and do vegan stuff in Salt Lake. And, and I became a little piece of that niche. And so I loved it. Like I loved the community. I loved working with, you know, these different ingredients. Um, and so I really appreciate appreciated it and loved it until I started not feeling good. Um, I started to become really lethargic. I was running a little bit more. I said, I want to, this is like the beginning of when I wanted to be competitive with running and I would like go for my run. I would have to drink so much coffee, get up and I'd come home and I'd be like demolished the rest of the day. And my blood work was coming back. Not great. Like my thyroid was super, super low mm-hmm. and it was, it was just, I was lethargic. I was exhausted. I was being tested for mono and I'm like, how am I getting mono? If I possibly have mono. And so, you know, I finally, I met my husband and he's like, what if you just had a piece of fish? And if you don't like it, you can just be vegan forever. And I remember I got a little piece of wild caught halibut up in park city. And I felt like someone had just given me like a vitamin B12 shot. I felt so good. Yeah. And so I switched and it was tough because I was vegan for so long. Mm -hmm. Um, But I started implementing and I really was craving red meat. So there was some kind of amino acid profile that I wasn't getting. Um, But I I started to see my body change, like my muscle dense. So yeah, I, I, it was just mostly the energy levels, you know, vegan diet and vegetarian diet. You're in a constant insulin cycle because even if you, are just eating like olive oil and veggies and fruit. Like that's all sugar eventually, you know? So there's no protein to break up that insulin cycle. Mm -hmm. And so you're just constantly spiking all day. So Mm. yeah. And on carnivore diet, I do it. It's not like a crazy energy burst. Like when I was eating a ton of carbohydrates, but it's just very even throughout the day, Mm -hmm. um, which I can appreciate. And I tend to stay a little bit leaner, which I can also appreciate, you know, without, which without much effort. Mm-hmm. So those are kind of the main differences. Yeah, yeah. thanks for sharing that. I, I have found with diets, yeah. I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of diet variation, right? Because it seems mm-hmm. like when we can kind of go into one extreme for a minute, we will upregulate a whole bunch of things, but we'll also kind of eventually mm-hmm. be downregulating some things. So being willing to change our patterns and switching into something else, then now those other things get upregulated and then, you know, but I also yeah. think that if we just stay quote unquote, balanced all the time, we miss some of the potential of our metabolism. Mm -hmm. So I like being able to go in between different approaches. So it's good on you for being willing. Cause it's like really, it is like the ultimate yeah. mindset journey for someone to come out of vegan. <laughs> so like, it's really tough. So good on you for being willing to just see how your body responded, you know? Yeah. And I mean, there was a, there was basically 10 years in between when I was vegan and now. Yeah. So, right. Right. You know, in between I was, I have done a lot of different things. The one, the one thing that never really stuck was keto for me. Mm. Um, that was a, that was a tough one that was hard for me to grasp. Um, and I have plenty of clients that love it and they, they do really well, but I'm glad you said the variation. Um, because, I felt really good when I started vegan. And I think it's because I was paying attention to my diet. You know, as soon as you pay attention to your diet, no matter what it is, you start seeing what works and what doesn't. Right. True. And yeah. And you know, I, I don't know, maybe if I did vegan diet now, I could do it a little bit better knowing what I know now about nutrition. Um, but you know, just like anything when I, yeah. I know a lot of people use keto diet to lean out and they look really good. And then eventually they need something back in yeah. to support that muscle mass. Yep. So yeah, the variation is, is good. Good call. 
<laughs> yeah. I'd say in my experience, like for someone as athletic as you or, or even me, like I have mm -hmm. found that keto is not usually optimal for those people. They're usually pretty carb tolerant already. And they're like mm -hmm. crushing it in the gym. And they're like, uh, I didn't really need to do this. And it's actually like, unless they have high inflammation for some other reason in their body, right. then yeah, they might actually get increased athletic performance. Cause they're, now they're not walking in there inflamed, but it seems to me yeah. that most people who are extremely athletic, like if they are going to do some sort of keto, it's going to be like a very high protein keto, something like carnivore, you know, so they have yeah. the amino acids to recover from their workouts mm -hmm. and build that muscle and preserve it as well. Yeah. And that is one of the things that I talk about. Well, one of the things we talk about in the book and in my little PDF is, um, bumping up protein almost in replacement of the carbs, you know, and obviously, mm. like I mentioned, I'm eating carbs right now, but it's, it's very limited source. Like I'm really just eating honey berries, yogurt, um, a little bit of milk. Like those are basically my carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I can get away with quite a bit on those things. Um, but I'm eating a ton of protein. I'm getting like 170 to 200 grams a day. Yeah. And so the calories are there, uh, with a moderate amount of fat. Yeah. So yeah, it, it seemed to work pretty well. I'm getting, um, I'm getting ready to hopefully do a competition at the beginning of July in the UK. Nice. And so obviously oh. my diet will shift a little bit more. And, you know, I, someone told me a long time ago, train with integrity, but compete to win. And so like, <laughs> whatever I need to feel that effort to go and, you know, win I'll do. So if that yeah. means you know, back to apple fritters. <laughs> yeah. Well, really, I love that. Cause it's like, um, instead of getting dogmatic and locked into a certain approach, you're like, I'm going to do whatever fits best for what I need, you know? So like yeah. while you were injured a carnivore with, that was great. And while you're getting ready yeah. for extreme athletic performance, you're like, I'm not so tied to something that I'm not willing to change mm -hmm. it so that I can be right. at my best, which I think is so important for all of us to not get so yeah. locked into our approaches that we can't even do what makes sense for us anymore because we have this like dogma and this identity we built yeah. that we have to live a certain way, you know, cause things change circumstances change. Absolutely. And you know, another thing that I've seen that I just want to like touch on really quick is, um, we all know carbohydrates fuel effort, especially high intensity right. and you know, weightlifting, it's great for recovery, but I see some of these, well, I'm going to say girls, cause I work with a lot of females. Um, I see some of these people or athletes that go in and they're training, they're feeling their effort. And then they double down on their training and then they like triple their training. And one of the things that I've found that's been so useful is instead of just adding onto your training, because you can't maintain that forever. Like right. we both know that you can't do that forever. Right. Um, bring your carbohydrates down. So you don't have to train so hard if you're not getting ready for something like don't get stuck in that like guilt cycle of like, Oh my gosh, I didn't get my three hours of training in today. Like just dial your carbohydrates back. Totally. It You're is gonna so look much, great. <laughs> right. It is like so much easier to just like eat a little less of something than have to go like feel like you have to like train it off and be in this like psychotic mm -hmm. taking over my entire life cycle. So yeah, thanks for that that insight. And I'm curious, yeah. like, do you have any idea like how your nutrition will change in preparation for this competition? Or are you just mm -hmm. gonna kind of feel it out and see? I as we get closer, the carbohydrates will most likely come up. Um in CrossFit, I can still tend to keep my protein high. If I were running, yeah. I'd probably dial protein back a little bit, as you know, I know you've done some awesome and endurance events, but protein would probably come down. But in this case, um, it's a two day cross CrossFit stop dial competition. Um, and so there's it's the heat throughout the day. Um, and it's, it's mostly going to be the carbohydrates come up. Um, probably stay around 200 leading up into the competition. So protein will most likely come down around 140, 140, 145, just to add the room for the carbohydrates. And, yeah. and, and this is for me, like personally, personally uh, every, right. everyone is so different, but fat will probably come down as well, probably down to around 65, 70, just for the room for carbohydrates. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And stay lean so, and strong. Totally. Yeah. And, and apple fritters. Know, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> well, Fat only I from apple up, fritters. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I bring up the apple fritters because, um, I don't know if, if you, I don't know how often you're on Instagram, but we, we got challenged. Our gym got challenged to do a 24 hour assault bike ride. Oh, I didn't over, see that. 
Oh my gosh. It's the worst thing I've ever done. It was <laughs> over new year's. And so it was teams of three. Um, wow. and you basically get as far as you possibly can in 24 hours on the assault oh. bike. And our <laughs> female team took, yeah, we took the, the world record for female teams. So, which is awesome. Oh um, my gosh. Wait, hold on. But, pause. If you guys don't know what an assault bike is, that's the bike where it has like the fan and it's like all, it's like the harder you go, the harder it is. And it's like, if you normally, if you do like two minutes straight, you want to puke for two minutes. Okay. So this is yeah. like 24 hours. That is it was, insane. It was pretty bad. It was so bad. <laughs> um, but it was interesting. This was like, right when I stopped being like super strict carnivore and I told myself, all right, all right I'm just going to listen to my body and try to figure out what I need. Like as soon as I get off the bike, I'm just going to, I know my body's going to tell me what I need. And the, the things that like I was really craving was salt. So I, I actually would like shake real salt on my hand and just lick my hand. Yeah. Um, which I thought was funny. I never thought I do that, that would too. happen, but they, yeah, they sent me some salt and some relight and I'm like, Oh cool. Nice. The relight's going to be great. I went straight for the salt. Yeah. Um, and then just straight up sugar. Uh Oh, Oh, there you are. Got you back. Yeah. Just straight up sugar. Um, which was apple fritters. And so <laughs> I know my body was just so depleted that that's oh, kind yeah. of what, what my body was asking for at, at that time. Um, yeah. You get to the hole enough yeah. in athletic performance and you know that like a small amount of anything is like barely even going to fill up the tank where it's like, we're not even close here. <laughs> like I'm depleted yeah. of everything. <laughs> uh, it was such a weird one. Yeah. It was strange. <laughs> like we were hallucinating and, Oh my it, gosh. It was, you know, the hardest part about an effort like that is the sleep deprivation. Oh, you know, yeah. your brain has to stay up. And so, yeah, it got real weird in the middle of the night. <laughs> You guys are animals. That is insane. I cannot believe you did that. Wow. That's like some yeah, major was... feat of human will. Holy cow. Yeah, All was, right. Uh, so it's a rough one. <laughs> <laughs> In wrapping up, um, the cookbook mm -hmm. curious yeah. what some of your favorite recipes are personally. Um, well, I love roasts. Like anytime you can just do like a really killer roast. That's my favorite. It meal preps really well. Yeah. It reheats really well. You can throw it in with eggs the next day. So um, and there's a couple of roast variations in there. Um, there's a couple of lamb, uh, recipes that I really love. Um, but of course, when you're on any kind of plan where you're watching your nutrition, like I'm always, I'm always cognizant of, okay, where's the treats when I get some sort of craving. So I have some protein pancakes in there. Nice. And then I also have tons of protein pancake variations on my Instagram, but nice. the collagen, like any kind of collagen and berries, um, those are kind of my favorite recipes. So the treats and the roasts, I'd probably say. Amen on the so, roasts like that. I will eat yeah. roast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner when mm -hmm. I have some ready. It is so good. You put some of the kosher salt from real salt on there. It's so mm -hmm. good. Um, yeah. all right. well, thanks so much. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience in closing? Um, a couple projects coming up. Um, I'm getting ready to actually publish my next book, which is all, it's very meat heavy. It's not strict carnivore. Um, but I'm partnering up with a um, Navy SEAL named Trevor Thompson. He's nice. just all around bad A um, and he's, he's a bow hunter. And so we're going to have lots of big game, lots of shareable Ooh. items, tons of meal prep. Um, and this will be the first time that I've really written and talked about some of the movie projects and actor cool. prep that I've done. So that I'm really excited about that. And that's yeah. coming out next. So. Do you know, do you know ballparkish when we can watch out for that? we're planning on laying the book out and, and wrapping it up, uh, by the end of June. And okay. so I would say midsummer, it'll be okay. ready to ready to go. Yeah. Right on. That's awesome. And then, okay. Again, your website, your website is shutupwork.com, correct? Uh-huh. Okay. Website, and, shut up work. And then on Instagram, shut up, eat, make sure you follow her there. She's got a large following and always tons of motivation, like on all the <laughs> levels. So follow Aaron there. And where else would you like them to find you or partake of whatever you have to offer? Um, I'm, I'm mostly on Instagram answer tons of questions on Instagram. I've got some information in my bio on carnivore diet and, um, and nutrition, but I, I try to stay up on my questions. So if you have a question about protein or carnivore diet or anything like that, I try to 
I try to get back to everyone within super nice. you know, a day or so. Yeah. That's super so. nice. Yeah. That's super generous. I know that can be a grind <laughs> you have a way bigger audience than me. So I can only imagine how many questions you get. So that's really rad. Of yeah. You. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap it up guys. Make sure you fi- yeah. go find Aaron, get this cookbook. Like seriously, I was like drooling. There's like steak tartare right out of the gate and like so many amazing looking recipes. So, um, again, the name of the cookbook is the essential carnivore diet cookbook, um, with Vivica is it Menig- Menegas. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm saying her last uh-huh. name. Right. Menegas. Menegas. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, make sure you check that out guys. We'll put links to everything in the show notes and yeah. Thanks Aaron. It was so fun talking yeah. to you. Appreciate your yeah, time. Yeah, Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And I'll hopefully I'll see you soon, girl. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Have a good one.